Hey there, this is Jacob from RoboFlow. Today I'm going to show you how to train scaled YOLO v4 to recognize your custom objects. That is, we're going to take data and we're going to draw bounding boxes around the objects we want the computer to detect, and then we're going to run those images through a training pipeline to teach the computer how to identify the objects in the image that we wanted to see. So, so what is scaled YOLO v4 and why is everyone so excited about it? So we put together a piece here, which I'll link, on how scaled YOLO v4 topped efficient debt to make it the state-of-the-art object detection network. That means it is the best model library for you to be going into to be starting your own custom object detector. And um, the key thing here is to see basically the network's performance relative to its speed. So it's a very fast network and it's getting very good performance. And in fact, it's topping for best performance even despite um, with all speed considerations in mind. Um, so here you can see it in the green, topping over efficient debt, which was the previous leader in object detection models. And you have performance on the y-axis, and you have speed on the x-axis. And you can see here there are many dots, meaning that the network comes in different sizes. So you can actually scale the network up as you're kind of weighing the, the trade-offs of speed of inference versus uh, accuracy of performance. So now diving into the scaled, YOLO v4 notebook. Um, so I will link this notebook here below, but this contains all the code you need to train scaled YOLO v4 on your own custom objects. So let's go ahead and dive in. So getting started here, you're going to want to go over and hit file, save a copy and drive. So that way you can copy the notebook into your own drive and make your own edits and not edit the master. Um, so after you've done that, go ahead and check the runtime and make sure that your runtime type is GPU. So that way you can be hitting the GPU, the free GPU resources in Colab to train your own custom network. So to get started, we're gonna, we're gonna clone the scaled YOLO v4 repo from WantkinU, and we're gonna change to the uh, YOLO v4 large uh, branch of that repo. That's where you're gonna find all the code that was used in the paper, and uh, we'll be able to use it on your own custom objects. Then we're gonna go ahead and install MishCuda. So MishCuda will let us uh, run the Mish activation functions in the network, um, uh, on the GPU. So that's, that's uh, something that we're going to need to install. Um, the next thing we're going to install is uh, PyAML. This will just let us read data files, basically. And then we'll go ahead and switch back to the directory. So while those things are installing, um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the data set that we're tackling today. So again, you can train this network to identify any object for your own custom objects. But today we're gonna work on uh, identifying uh, ships and jet skis um, from an aerial point of view on a lake. Um, so we'll go ahead and check out this data set here. Uh, this is a public data set, which I will also link a look, uh, below if you want to follow along directly, um, called Aerial Maritime, which we uh, gathered here at Rebelflow of flying a drone over a lake. Um, so once you've loaded your data into Rebelflow, you will see it um, in a uh, setup like this. So this is kind of a data management platform where you can create data set versions um, and get your data in the right format. Um, and this is, this is the easiest way to be going in uh, through this network is downloading in here and making sure your data is um, kind of all right. So here's uh, an example image where we have uh, some docks. Let's see if we can see a few more. So we also have some boats here that we want to identify. Um, so if you wanted to actually change some of these annotations, uh, you can do that in RoboFlow. So you just go to modify data set. Um, and then you'll go back to the same image um, here. And then in this case, you can draw new bounding boxes around things. Like if we wanted to add sheds, we might be starting to draw uh, bounding boxes around those images. So um, one thing to keep in mind though, is that uh, it's data is very key. So you really wanna make sure that your data is high quality because um, your network is going to reflect that performance. So after you're done um, modifying your data set, you go ahead and hit generate. Um, and then you get a data set version. Um, so this is generating a new version of the data set. And once that's done, so that'll go ahead and process here. Um, then we'll be taking this uh, into the notebook. Um, so uh, th th there's a few things to be considering though as you're generating these versions. As you can see, I kind of blew through it here, but there's pre-processing options and there's augmentation options. So you can be standardizing your data set with pre-processing options. This applies to all of your data set splits, train, validation, and test. Um, and then you can also apply augmentation options. And this will only affect the training set, so it effectively 
uh, blows your training set up in size. So um, you can make slight edits to the images so you can kind of get the most out of the data that you're putting through the network. Um, and, and you have some control over that to make sure you're getting the right augmentations for your data set there. But that's something only you, you can decide and play around with. Um, so then you get here um, and you get an export link. Um, so you wanna choose Yellow V5 PyTorch. Uh, you can export to kind of any different network or different data format there, but you're gonna wanna choose Yellow V5 PyTorch for that, for this tutorial. Um, and then you go ahead and get a link here and that's the curl link, which you'll bring in here to uh, bring in the uh, data into the notebook to train the network. So I've already went ahead and downloaded the data here. Um, as you can see, we uh, bring in these images. So we have all the images and then there's also TXT annotations. But you don't even have to worry about the format of your data here because we've already uh, made it so it will export uh, very well and play nicely with this network. Um, so yeah, one thing you might wanna check is just the uh, data.yaml um, here. I think that's one directory up for me now. Um, but just make sure that it has the class labels that you want just to make sure that everything uh, worked okay. But I'll go ahead and switch that back because if you're clicking through, it'll be up there. Um, now, um, if you want to look at the model architecture here, you can go ahead and just uh, print out what it looks like. So this is the uh, scaled Yellow V4 architecture. So I'm not really going too deep into architecture here, but I'll link another video on that. But the biggest thing here is that this Yellow V4 has been CSPIs. That means that uh, basically the cross-stage partial network technology founded by Wong Kin Yu has been applied into the Yellow network, making it run even faster for its size. So you can see all these kind of CSPs, um, all these network layers have been CSPIs. So that's pretty sweet. Um, so now here, this is the training command. So if you want to train on your own objects, you'll go ahead and here and you can change settings. So you want the resolution size in the image. You want the batch size here, but you can probably leave that at 16 unless you're doing very large images. Epochs, how long you want to train for. So we're just going to do a short training job here of say 50 epochs. Um, and so the longer, usually the better. Um, but if you want to kind of just move quickly, you can set that to be lower. Um, and the weights will be um, a place where you could pick up custom weights if you want to, but we'll leave that blank for now. The config is the thing we just printed out showing you how the network is defined. Um, the name will be the name of the network. If you want things to not break in the, the notebook, just leave that the same as it is. Um, and then um, there are a few other options there, but this, this is pretty much all you need to start training. So we'll go ahead and kick off training here. And so you'll notice here that we're just hitting Python train.py. Um, it will tell us here that it's hitting the GPU, the Tesla V100 that we've received from Google Colab, which is a very nice GPU, so they should train pretty quickly. Um, but we're only using a single uh, GPU device. And to use scale the only before, if you really want to scale it, um, you know, we're going to have to uh, add more GPUs. So I'll tell you how to do that here in a moment. Um, but here we can see the network built, um, our, our data loaded in here. Um, so this is the data loading portion of the code. And then here we're going ahead and we're kicking off training. So we're actually watching here as the MAP metric over epoch by epoch is hopefully going to start catching some steam. Um, so, so far that's zero, but we'll, we'll check back here in a moment and see if that um, has risen. Um, yeah, so while training is running here, I want to show you all um, how to train on multi-GPU. So uh, here, if you go into uh, scale the other v4, this, this is the same uh, link where we cloned the GitHub repository. Um, you'll see here uh, that some training commands are suggested. So if you really want to like scale this up to the bigger models, um, you're going to do torch distributed launch. So let's say you're on multi-GPU and you've got NVIDIA runtime set up with all those. Then you're going to go here and you're going to use device 0123. So this is how you can kind of hit uh, multi-GPUs for training. And, and that will speed up training quite a bit if you have a very large data set and you want to use larger networks. Um, so yeah, so how do you use, how do you use larger networks? So um, that, that's always the question, right? So you go into models and you see here 
these are the model configurations. So we hit YOLO v4 CSP, which is the base YOLO v4 model, scaled YOLO v4 model, and then it scales up. So it's gonna scale up to uh, P5, P6, P7. And then if you wanna scale all the way down to YOLO v4 Tiny, um, I will link a video where we explain how to train YOLO v4 Tiny in another video. But the thing to know about that is it's in a different framework, it's in Darknet. So it's not in this PyTorch framework that we're in right now. Um, and so you'll wanna actually uh, just use a different video uh, there. Um, so yeah, so that's that's uh, kind of more on scaling up the model. So let's go ahead and uh, check back in on training here. Uh, looks like we still have some time to take. Um, so yeah, so this is usually um, probably not the best sign if you're still at map of zero at this epoch. So, you know, I'm doing this live on a fresh data set. So um, I'm actually going to switch over and uh, switch up a new trading job um, and kick that off. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll uh, show you the results in a second. So here looking at this, we're going to actually, so th this happens all the time when you're training a network is you try one experiment. Um, it doesn't really work so well. So then you need to move on um, and try the next thing. So the thing was we were training on the raw images. I was hoping we'd be able to get by with just 74 raw images just to get a start. Um, but it looks like these are probably too zoomed out. And you know, they're actually, um, the network's not able to take this because uh, these objects are so small. So one thing we might consider doing is tiling. So this is an example of uh, standardizing your data or using augmentations to kind of uh, improve the quality of your network. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, actually use this tiled version, which is zoomed in. And I'm gonna go ahead and kick off training on that. And then uh, we'll be back after training completes on that data set and we'll be able to run through the rest of the notebook together. So see you in a few. All right, so we're back here. Uh, training has finished. Um, so again, we uh, edited our data set to be tiled. So we actually uh, uh, chopped the images up into a bunch of different pieces and made a lot larger data set that's more zoomed in. And here you can see our um, MAP has uh, started to take well. So we're all the way up to uh, almost 30% MAP. Um, MAP is a, a metric kind of showing how many boxes uh, the object detector is getting as it's, uh, as it's training. Um, so another thing we can do is we can log out uh, the results of our training on the tensor board. So this will show you kind of how your, your network is learning. Um, and again, the most important thing uh, to be looking at in these charts is uh, the loss metric and the MAP metric. So this will take a second to come up, um, but then we can visualize it. So here from our training run here, we can see this is our MAP curve. Um, so it was really going up. I, I definitely stopped uh, this training run uh, prematurely. So you wanna see if you run it for a long enough time, you wanna see this line uh, going up and then starting to kind of uh, top off at a, at a certain level. Um, and here you can see there are like for every training run, you can kind of visualize different training runs. So you can see the first one in orange, uh, we were still at zero. And that's when I kind of uh, panicked and said, you know, we, we got to make our data set better. Otherwise we're, we're not going to get this network to, uh, to learn. So, um, so yeah. So another way to look at this is um, going to be experiment one, I think. Um, is to kind of look at this PNG. So same format, just in PNG format. Um, and oh, for some reason that didn't explain, didn't uh, didn't display, but you can get the same thing in a, in a PNG. Um, and then another thing to look at is to look at your training data. So this is uh, showing kind of the initial training data that we were putting through it, um, what the images looked like. So you can check that to make sure the network was training right. And then you can also look at the way that it's uh, augmenting. So this is going to augment uh, with a mosaic loader actually on top of the data that you've uh, exported from RoboFlow. So even more augmentation, more augmentation, the better. Um, and then another thing uh, now that we're going to look at is we're going to look at our weights. So here again, since I did a second experiment, it's going to be experiment one. Um, but you can look at the weights. So it's saving in, over the epochs and then it's also saving the best weights. So those are gonna be the ones that you probably wanna use, which is best weights. It, it checks your validation set and then um, says, you know, the best one on the validation set is gonna be the weights that we save down. Um, so those are gonna be weights that you're, you're gonna to wanna to use. 
So now this is pretty exciting here. We're going to actually try to run inference on test images. So this library makes it very easy. You can just use detect.py. Um, make sure to invoke your weights. Um, so what did I do wrong here? Okay, so this needs to be called best weights. So you invoke the weights that you looked at up here. Um, and then it will hit those weights and then it will look in the test folder and you could just put an image here or a video or whatever whatever you want to infer on um, and then it will go ahead and, and make inference so you can see here that was finding glyphs mostly lifts and some docs um, so we'll go ahead and now look at those test inferences um, so this is image by image in our test set so this is uh, objects that it has never seen so here it found a lift so that's pretty impressive we trained our network to be identif be able to identify objects from the air you know without um, really too much code just just the notebook here um, and so it's doing these inferences that you can see here like finding the dock finding the lift and um, drawing boxes around things there it found a jet ski um, so these are all images that model has never seen pretty impressive right so you can use this to identify images in your own uh, objects in your own custom data set. So you want to send in images with your own custom objects, draw the boxes around them in RoboFlow, export into here, and then hit training. So the last thing I want to kind of go through here is how to download your weights. So this will be able to take your weights out of the notebook and you can put them into an application. So you can uh, you know, take the weights and you can convert them into different formats. Um, and then you can put those, uh, put those weights and put that application uh, somewhere else. So you uh, might not be rebuilding this exact code repository. You might be, um, but this lets you kind of take your weights and put them out in uh, into the world for deployment. But um, so you can go ahead and hit here um, and you again find the, the weights file above um, and then you hit um, from Google Colab import files and then just files.download. Um, so we'll go ahead and fix this here. So it's payment one, and we're going to do best.pt. And so then that will kind of start downloading the weights. So again, uh, thanks for following through here. We've uh, learned how to train scaled YOLO v4. We trained the base YOLO v4 CSP model, um, but we also demonstrated how you can use this model to scale up to even large models. And if you want to use a very small model, then you want to look to YOLO v4 tiny. So again, Thanks for following through on our tutorial today, and um, as always, happy training.